How to get into physical therapy assistant school or how to get into a physical therapy assistant program. That's what we'll be talking about in this video. What's going on guys? My name is Casey Coleman. I'm a physical therapist and the co-founder of PrePT Grind. And on this video, we're going to be talking about how to get into a physical therapy assistant program. So if you're watching this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. If you're like, I don't know if I should do PTA or PT, I don't know. Well, here's a video explaining how to go the PTA route. All right. So I'll probably be doing some more blogs and some other videos on this as well. Uh, but just to be clear, a lot of the stuff that we talk about for physical therapy programs of how to get into them, how to stand out, all the stuff in our whole ecosystem and platform definitely does apply for PTA students as well. But in this video, I'll be breaking down like the big differences of how to get into a PTA program, like the requirements over a PT program. All right, so let's get right into it. So the number one big thing is that at this time, at the time of the video, there is no central application service for PT programs. So if you're deba uh, debating between the two and you've looked into PT a little bit, you might have come across something called PTCAS, Physical Therapist Centralized Application Service. And that's where you can apply to a majority of the PT schools out there who participate from one service, one software system. But for PTA schools, at this time, there is no central application service for PTA schools. Uh, from what I heard, the APTA, our American Physical Therapist Association, is working on it, but at the time it's not live yet. So for PTA schools, you apply directly to the PTA schools. So that's number one. Number two, right now, there is no, um, I guess, central, there's no central standard for PTA schools across the country. All right, so for PT schools, there's a whole uh, commission on accreditation for physical therapy education. It's called CAPTI. So there's a standard for physical therapy schools, the doctorate level at the doctorate level program. But for PTA schools, from my understanding, there's no standard like CAPTI for PTA schools. So it's very, very school specific for PTA schools. So if you want to go that route, just, just keep that in mind. But we're going to talk about some general things. So those were the two big things on the differences when applying to either PT school or PTA school. It's very school specific. Like one school, they're gonna be like, we need this. Another school is gonna be like, we don't care what that school wants, we want this. So just keep that in mind. So that's the first thing. Next, let's go over some major uh, requirements. So number one for a majority of PT schools, they're gonna want um, your high school degree or high school degree equivalent. So basically, did you pass high school? Do you have your GRE or something of the equivalent to that all right to be clear you do not need your college degree you do not need a bachelor's degree to apply to pta school okay you just need your uh, high school diploma or the ged or something equivalent again you do not need your bachelor's degree to apply to pta school can you have your bachelor's degree and apply to pta school yes so you can have your bachelor's degree and still apply to PTA school, but you don't need it. Okay, I get that question a lot. There's always a lot of confusion about it, but I hope that's clear. I slowed down, took my time with this part. You don't need your bachelor's degree to apply to PTA school. All you need is high school or GED. But if you have your bachelor's degree, that's fine. You might get a few extra points for it, but you don't need it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, number one, with the prerequisite classes, again, this is gonna vary so much, but a majority of schools are gonna want something like an English or communications class done, okay? Anatomy and physiology, all right? And lastly, some sort of psychology, sociology, something like that. Those are the three main classes I want you to pay attention to. Is that That's what a majority of PTA schools would look for for prerequisite classes. Now again, let's be clear. Some schools may want a medical terminology class or, um, I don't know, um, a sociology and psychology class or English one and English two. Like, just be very careful out there. Make sure you know what each school wants for PTA schools that you're applying to. So those prerequisites can get um, very hairy when you're looking at these classes, but 
anatomy and physiology, psychology, and like an English communications class. Those are the three I want you to pay attention to. All right, so those are the classes. Um, and with those classes, a majority of schools would like to see a C or higher, okay? So you can't just apply with, hey, I got those three classes, but I got two Ds and an F. They're gonna be like, cool, you got the classes, but like, you still got Fs in that, right? You got Ds in that. So, you know, can you give us, respect us a little bit, you know, put a little effort? So just keep that in mind. You can't, like PTA schools don't want bums either, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, I should just go the PTA route. It's so much easier. Yes, there are less requirements usually and, you know, stuff we talked about. Um, schools vary on those requirements, but they still want to see good grades. They want good applicants. They want good students. Like, it's not, it's not easier in that sense. Like, so just keep that in mind with the classes. So if they want to see your higher and usually uh, a GPA of a 2.5 or higher uh, with those classes, usually. Now, again, read the fine print. They might say a 2.0 or higher with your GED or high school diploma. Whatever that is, just pay attention to the to that fine print, but usually 2.5 or higher uh, with those classes, GPA-wise. Um, next, the other requirements, they're probably gonna see some kind of observation hours. It's gonna be on the lower side, 10 hours, 20 hours something like that. Um, they're gonna see any volunteer or work experience you've done and probably a letter of recommendation or two. All right, so keep that in mind as well. And once you graduate PTA school, you're gonna have your associate's degree. You're gonna have physical therapy assistant degree and it's gonna be classified as an associate's degree. Then after that, you take your board exam and then you are a licensed PTA, okay? For the state and the country and all the other states that you want to. Um, work in that's a whole different conversation but um, that those are the next steps once you complete a PTA program and that's usually 18 to 24 months um, you're gonna take your board exam and you're gonna have your associate's degree okay you're gonna have your associate's degree so if you already have your bachelor's degree you're gonna have that but if you go to PTA school you're also gonna have your associates uh, with your um, PTA degree so those are the major points there um, so I hope that was clear. I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, I'll make a part two. Um, I plan on making some more PTA content because the little research I did uh, for this video, um, there wasn't a ton out there. So I'm gonna try to put more PTA content out there as well. So hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below, like, subscribe, share. And if you're new to our channel, look at all the videos, look at all the links. Welcome to our world. Again, my name is Casey Coleman. I'm a physical therapist and the co-founder of Pre-PT Grind. And we help thousands of students get into PT school and PTA school without wasting time, money, stress, anxiety, staying up late, all that stuff. So um, if you like what you saw, welcome and we'll see you on the next video.